Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney journey. It's been a, it's a bit, a few days, because Brain decided to be mean lately. But last time, we went and we solved the wibbly-wobbly weirdness that was the, the case surrounding the Mask Damask. And the Savare Ace Detective Monocle Man. It was a very interesting case. A little bit of oddness here or there, but I really liked the case. The characters were interesting. It was all just a very fun time. But uh, apparently, the next one that we're going to be going into is apparently weird. To some degrees. Considering that we saw Maya wearing a maid's outfit on the, like, episode cover, this will just be a weird case to go into, won't it? Yeah. Either way, let's go and see the D. And I guess before we really jump into it, because... Alright, the... I see no room for misinterpretation of facts. It wasn't me! I swear it wasn't me! Uh, for... <laughs> the evidence and testimony we have seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at his table when he drank. No, you're wrong! I know what I saw! I saw... I saw... This is a... I was caught off by the sudden opening! I saw someone else there! A man! He's the real killer! Why does it look like evil Phoenix Wright? Oh no, it's Salt Bay. He's pouring salt into that man's coffee. Why won't anyone believe me? Because you live in Japan, California. Nobody believes anyone there. Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps this case up, wouldn't you? Mr. Wright? This court finds the defendant guilty. This court is adjourned. All right, interesting, weird. What a way to open it. Okay, because I was caught off guard because at first I was just like, wait, did I save at a weird time? Did I reload the wrong save? And it took me a moment for my brain to really realize, wait, the normal game doesn't autoplay like that. Uh, so, Phoenix canonically, like, again, lost a case, and we didn't even get to play it. That was weird. That's just a weird way to open up the case thing. And to make him lose to pain, that's also extra weird. Uh, it just caught me off guard with how it was going. It was just the normal diddly D. But okie doke. As I was going to say before I was caught off guard by what was go- By the auto-playing opening, I always forget that the opening's auto-play. Compared to everything else. But, as I was going to say before I got distracted, the DLC, free DLC, for the Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach came out. I haven't played it myself, but it actually looks somewhat interesting and good. Partly because it appears they just completely went in a different direction from the main Security Breach game and decided to tone things back a bit. So while it doesn't have the same flavor of, oh, you can go places and animatronics are around every corner to come kill you, it feels like a more cohesive experience at the very least. It um, <laughs> The DLC actually looks so decent that I almost want to get Security Breach to buy it. That it amuses me. But, yeah, this is just a weird opening to this uh, case, but I'm sure we're gonna get context. So let's go. January 6th? Oh no. The worst day. <laughs> ah, the start of the new year always makes me feel like I can take on the whole world. I bet it does, Maya. So, I've decided that our resolution should be 
Zavari, take on the world! What do you think? Sure, whatever, Maya. I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. There's, that's a thing. That's a thing. Oh, wrong button, but that's a mis mistletoe cake. Is that an actual thing? I don't believe you, game. Never! You've got to eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey, uh, let me guess. That is Gumshoe. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective. Uh, likewise. Now listen up, right? I wanna... Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer-police cooperation. Um, yeah, me too. All right, pal, you've got some explaining to... Have you got a holiday present for me, Detective? A what? Well, it's, um, here, have this. It's really nothing much, but... Yay, thanks! Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. <laughs> Maya, do you just have ADHD to the max right there? Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten her present, have you? Uh, no, I mean, yes, I, I mean, no. Are you go Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> I guess I'm busted. How'd you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Well, let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I want to see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney Wright trounced? D trounced? Let me see that. The defense attorney gave an almost childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well, and don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. When was this issue from, anyway? Um, December of last year, which I guess makes it last month. Which makes it old news, you mean. But I wasn't involved in a poisoning case in December. <laughs> Are you telling me that my random joke answer of, oh my gosh, evil Phoenix Wright is r correct? You mean to say... That somebody dressed up as Phoenix Wright poisoned a guy, then defended the person that they f apparently framed for the poisoning. Like, obviously, that has to prove that, like, in the court of law, if somebody goes out of their way to impersonate a lawyer and gets a, gets a verdict... Does, that has to mean a mistrial, right? Hmm, so what do you think about all this, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A ph A phony Nick? This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. Guess he started off the year fun, too. So, what are you going to do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? Well, it's your fault that the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because the Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves? But I didn't do anything wrong. At least not that I can remember. You better make this right, pal. Now! And that means taking the case back to court. Got it? Well, I guess you could have... Could you appeal it? Could you appeal a case like this? That makes me wonder. Sounds like we've got our first case of the year. Let's tackle it with gusto. I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're going to take in the case, right? Good. I'm going to head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. Drop by if you need something. Okay, pal? I guess people are starting to know the name Phoenix Wright. The client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation. I guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of guy would do that? Is there anything... Nope. Just wanted to make sure because I'm fairly certain that... In the last case, I needed to talk to her about something. Well, I guess let's go to the detention center. 
This is so nerve-wracking. Waiting to meet our new client. I wonder just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. C keep it down, Maya! That kind of talk could ruin me! Ah! But 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 you? 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 The tutorial lady for the first, the second game? You? You? How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? They put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop crying. Aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm totally and utterly let down. Ah, you're... Are you? Don't pretend you don't know me. It's me, Maggie. Remember? Maggie Beard. Maggie Beard. Ah! Maggie Beard. She's the policewoman I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop, too. What are you doing in here? Didn't I get you a quit? Oh, sure. Very funny. After the fifth-rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Oh, I see. So that's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember her saying the exact same thing last time. But I don't mind. What's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Wright is here with me. I won't let the world keep me down, sir! <laughs> so, how come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Hmm, I was fired after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, I don't mind one bit. I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. Oh, so, what do you do now? In the second act of The Life of Maggie Beard, I'm playing the role of a waitress. A waitress? Yes, in a French restaurant. I don't know if that looks French to me, but I'm not much for interior decorating. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. Ha! Ah. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. <laughs> you don't mean that, Mr. Armstrong. Like, come on, Raiden! How am I supposed to run a restaurant if I don't break a few eggs? And you got into this mess straight away, right? <laughs> hey, that's the wrong reading of that line. Yeah, you could put it that way. But, but, when she looks up from her... That looks weird. It lo she looks like an alien when she does that. This whole mess started on the 3rd of last month. And it happened at Trasbien. Trasbien? Yes, it's a restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee. And then... Why did that guy have a scouter? Why did that guy have a scouter? <laughs> did he poison a Saiyan? One of the men slipped some poison into the victim's cup. The victim took just one sip and was gasping for air. I was so shocked I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? You keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all! I'd never even seen the guy before! Oh. So she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. And the other man, the killer. You saw him. Oh, for some reason I thought that was uh, Beard talking. And the other man, the killer. You saw him, right? Of course! A good waitress must be attentive to the clientele! So, you saw the killer, but you were found guilty of the crime anyway? How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright! Ah! I guess the answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Better see if I can get a description of the guy. So, if you saw the murderer, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. Saw what? The other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer, everyone. Why does he have a scouter? The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. But how's that possible? I don't know, but nobody, not one person, would believe me, sir. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense. My granny could have done a better job. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then... They found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? 
a small bottle of poison. What? The poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. Hello, hello there. We are... <laughs> we are playing. Already, like... Just an opening that is weird to me. <laughs> and again... The... Th the, the, the shadowed face, it just looks like Giga Chad Evil Phoenix. And I don't know why. And no one else saw this other guy? No, sir. That's what everyone else said, but I don't see how they could have missed him. I myself am doing good. Just thrown for a loop from how this started. We started in the court. I thought I loaded the wrong save. It took a minute for my brain to catch up and be like, wait a minute, normal cases don't autoplay. And it's also kind of funny to see Beard back again. I was the one who took the coffee to the two men. Oh? And what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I kind of thought they might be in the music industry. In music? How come? <laughs> Is that Phoenix? <laughs> no, that's the hilarious thing. When, I, when, when that flash scene came up in the intro, I was like, Oh no, it's Evil Phoenix. And then it turns out it is Evil Phoenix, because he poisoned the guy, and then apparently posed as Phoenix to defend Maggie Beard so terribly that she'd get a guilty verdict. <laughs> Hilarious. At least that's the only option that could happen, because Phoenix got a guilty verdict in a case that he didn't even go to. You'd think that they would actually, like, double-check with the agency. Be like, oh, hello, Phoenix. Uh, we are calling your office because we want to make sure that you have everything. Then again, this is Japan, California, Phoenix, Wright, Ace Attorney World, where there's only three days to do cases. Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece and an emo musician's look about him. He had an, uh, he had a scouter. <laughs> and there was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get look? Did you get a look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something. They must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. Or it could mean that that disc had information, and it could have been an attempted like trade off. But let's see. We'll find out. So it was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc. Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Would you buy that CD of a group named that? Uh, what was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No, MC... And what about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I am... Um, I don't really remember. Only that he was a young man, well-built like the victim, really. Uh, do you have anything to say about this? Oh, yeah. I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article's about my case! Can you tell me anything about the guy who was pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I'd been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Uh. Hey, Maggie. Was my evil double <laughs> AM here too? <laughs> no, I don't remember a phony you, Maya. Aw, it would have been so cool. No, it wouldn't have, because you have, you by yourself have been on the wit, like, not witness stand, but the defendant stand far too many times. We do not need an evil you to make things even worse. I hope that's not foreshadowing. <laughs> then you got really worked up and passionate. I'm gonna get you a clear day, I'm gonna get you a clear to this crime, you said. Okay, I get the picture. But you met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize that guy wasn't the real me? I guess, looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little? Well, okay, so you were a bit taller than normal, and you looked a bit shady, and your voice was a bit weird. Oh, and you had this kind of funny accent, and... So the guy was nothing like me, then? But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers? Didn't they realize he was an imposter? Everyone had the, the, these big question marks on their faces. But it seemed like no one wanted to say anything, sir. This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. That's what I said. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? I mean, surely you could go up 
but at the same time, this is Japanifornia, where cases are solved in three days, no matter what. So I doubt we'd be able to go and be like, obviously the person who pretended to be me wasn't me, we demand a retrial. But the judge would just be like, I don't think so, I'm the judge. Probably. The court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with a defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building. I think you mentioned that. Still, it's impressive you survived. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of food. Failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But I will survive, because Maggie Beard always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. Ah, Zeniop is really going to pay for this. A backwards Phoenix wants two names. <laughs> what are you staring at me like that for? Maya's right. Whoever it is that thought it was a good idea to use my name and get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him. Don't worry, we'll get Zinni up for you. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you where Trez Bien is then. Trez, ah, right. The restaurant where the murder took place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. All right, Nick. Let's go check out this restaurant and its food. I wonder how things are going to go. To be like, ah, oh, but weren't you just here? No. There's a pink badger now. There's a pink badger and it is BDSM cufflinked strapped to the blue badger. It's been ages since we came down to the precinct, huh, Nick? Looks like Gumshoe isn't around. He's got it so easy, leaving everyone else to do the work. No, he's out there somewhere. My bet is on the courthouse. He's probably trying to arrange the retrial of this case. Guess that means we should go to the detention center and chat with our killer, huh? After being convicted without a fair trial, I'm not sure killer is the right label. Well, first we gotta... we got we gotta know! Hey, that's the police mascot, isn't it? It's so cute! That's the Blue Badger! It was my idea! I made it! And now it's the national symbol of the police force! So what's with the pink one? It's new, right? She's not an it, Nick. She's a she, right, Chief? Yep, meet the Pink Badger! So one's called Blue and the other's called Pink, but they're both called Badger. You got it! They're married. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Badger seem to be cuffed together, Chief. You got it! That's marriage for you! Whoa, a mascot that's deeper than the deepest of deep oceans. Well, I guess we have to go to the detention center and then we can move to Tresbian. Well, this is upbeat music. Oh no! I recognize that face. Wasn't it on, like... A new, like, some kind of newspaper thing we gave Edgeworth in the first game in Rise from the Ashes? Wow, look at this place. Look? More like smell. What is with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? Then again, girls like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is a restaurant, and it's open for business. I like this case. I heard last time I played and finished the last case of Mask to Mask, I had a chatter say, the next case makes me feel uncomfortable and I just can't wait to find out what they were meaning. So far it's opened up weirdly and interestingly. It's, de de it's definitely interesting and I want to know what happens next. Hello, anyone here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. If there's no one here, we can take anything we want. Yeah, I suppose we can. <laughs> I suppose we can commit a crime. We can't look at the... 
We can't look at the photo of the man himself. Is that Freddie Mercury on a magazine cover? It's a rack full of fashion magazines and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? It'd be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm? There's something stuffed in behind the, the rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this! Someone scribbled a little doodle on the side of the pages. MC Bomber? Is that a doodle of Mask to Mask? It's cartoonish, but I appreciate that considering what's coming up. Oh boy. That'll be interesting. Huh, so there's a Mask to Mask doodle with the laugh. MC Bomber with a 100,000 scratched out. And an actual bomb to the right. Well, actual bomb. With 500,000 scratched out. Hmm. <laughs> nice DJ name. That's what they were saying. A hundred thousand dollars, maybe? I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. Maybe it's Mick Bomber? A name? This paper is from December 3rd. This paper's from the day of the poisoning. What? And nobody found it up until now. A paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. I should see if I can find out more about this paper. Look at all the little trinkets tucked away in here. I bet Mr. Armstrong collected all these personally. Again, Mr. Armstrong, I can only imagine the Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> French maid, son. They serve customers in response to them being seated. Let's see, a bouquet of flowers, some pot puree, and look, fine bone china cups. I never knew you were so cultured. Come on, Maya, this is common knowledge. Any Joe Schmo knows this much. I don't know what a pot puree is. Look, it's one of those magical boxes that spits out... <laughs> it's a cash register, Maya! It's a cash register, how do you not know what a cash register is? Haven't you gone to get burgers? A magical box! You know, you're the only person who would ever describe a cash register in that way. Well, it's... Fear me! It's the restaurant's front entrance. There's a sign hanging on the door written in French. It probably says open or closed. You know, why the hell would you... Why the hell would you make a French restaurant in a place, and then have, like, more than likely we're coming in here, and they'll be like, Oh, but it's, the sign says we're closed. It's in French, you, 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 you baguette. It must be one or the other, but I don't know which sense I, I don't know Jack about French. <laughs> don't know Jack about France. Wow, it's a beautiful winter wonderland out there. Really cool, I love snow, let me see. Huh? It's not white, it's not even snowing. Got you! I was only kidding, Maya. Nick, there are lies that are okay to tell and lies that definitely aren't. All I did was tell an itty bitty white lie about non existent white snow. This table's set nicely. It just needs a customer. What do you think this flower is, Nick? Let's see. Well, it doesn't look like a tulip, and it's not a sunflower. I don't think. Duh, even I could have told you that. Well, those are the only kinds of flowers I know. Dagnabbit, I'm a lawyer, not a botanist! They haven't cleaned it up in a month? No, oh, the murder happened on December 3rd. It is January 6th in this world, and they haven't cleaned it up. This must be the table where the murder occurred. I guess so, with all this police tape around it. And that stain must be from the poisoned coffee. Don't go licking the tablecloth, okay, Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. And why can I picture you doing just that? It's racked, it's all in French, my name's more chic. I better try and figure out anything I can about it. Hmm, I was more... 
guess there's a yeah, We just came to get one piece of evidence. I guess we get to move. Let's go. Oh, a sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did Guts and Braun manage to defend his heavyweight title? Sorry, Maggie, that paper is actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. And Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I found this paper in the magazine rack at Tres Bien. Really? That's strange. Tres Bien doesn't get newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. He's not fond of current events, you say? Then maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want to, uh, you to take a look at is a scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber! That was the name that was written on the CD! Just as I thought. I guess it wasn't MC Screwdriver after all, huh? So that 100000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure! The Master of Curane, or the Spirit Song, or even Maya's theme! <laughs> I'm okay, Maya. So if the sample CD was on the victim's table, that means this newspaper must, may have belonged to the victim. You're right! So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we'd better step up our investigation, don't you think, Nick? Nothing else. I guess let's head to the criminal affairs department. There's nobody here, and we gotta go back to the get them place, I guess. Even though there's no butterfucking here last year. Oh la la, bonjour! I'm trying to think of a good voice, because I can only imagine that it is Mr. Curly Fries over there on the wall. Uh, oh la la, bonjour! Welcome to La Tresbienne! Oh, hello. What happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. <laughs> don't, 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 don't you shake your titties at me, man. That is uncalled for. Don't, 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 don't do it. <laughs> don't ever do that again. Bienvenue! Welcome to my petite restaurant! Huh? B Avenue? Oh, non, ma petite chérie. Huh? Me? <laughs> Look at this face! Look like it's rejected by its own mother, you're fatigued, no? I just can't think of a good voice for this guy! He is weird, his eyes are so big! And also he has fucking monster truck arms. I think that guy could murder me. My, my brain, my brain just went. <laughs> what if this guy is now the heavyweight and he knocked out that guy? That would be a hilarious, like, like, brick joke. <laughs> Especially since he has a fucking monster truck arms. Oh, okay. I'm, I don't want to make him Russian. That's a voice for this guy. My brain is just floundering. Look at this face. Look like it's rejected by its own mother. You have fatigue, no? Hello, you need this? An aromatic bath oil, melange, la la nero la in la rose? My personal recommendation. You think I need what? Oui, oui, just add a couple of drops of this mixture to a la bath water, voila! It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for la monsieur? Who, oh, me? Look at that face. Look like puppy rejected by itself. You are fatigued, no? For you, Monsieur, I recommend this. Or you're for Pokemon. And maybe an uh, interv. Oui, oui. I will add la peppermint and la Clary's clary sage for fragrance exceptional. Such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, Monsieur. M my beauty? Hello, so if you'll be seated, I'll bring you the special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. Ma bien, sir. I know this already, monsieur. You're la phoenix, right, non? Um, yes. You know me? Ma, oui, oui. I'd never forget the man who flirts with me, especially in court. I guess he was cross-examined by a mysterious zinio. <laughs> it looks like everyone to do... It looks like everyone to do with this case knows who I am already. I wonder what sort of impression Zinniop's been leaving on people, don't you? Allow me to introduce myself to you again. Don't shake your titties at me! I am Jean Armstrong, enchanté! 
Of course he stopped there. So what does Trez being mean? I know Trez, that means three, right? <laughs> no, 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 Trez being in Francais. In English, you would say very good. Oh, very good. Oui, ex exactement. La atmosphere is très bien and la cuisine is très bien. If the food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? My cuisine is not for all. Some people, they do not appreciate la hot cuisine. I thought everyone liked hot cuisine. <laughs> Since I have lost Maggie, I do not have enough hands. So you're running this place on your own now? Oui, for the moment. No one has answered my advertisement. Oh, pour moi. Oh, please don't eyeball me while you say that. I'm le chef. I'm le manager. I'm also a trained aromatherapist. <laughs> a roaming what? A practitioner of aromatherapy. The art of soothing the soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but... So, could you tell me what you know about the incident? Bien, it makes me sad to remember it. I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So, it was the third of last month, just after one in the morning, afternoon. But very weird for this French restaurant to be up in one in the morning. A man who was in the air for coffee suddenly became ill. Because of the poison in his coffee. That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came up to see what it was, I was already strumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon Dieu! He was dead! Maggie had bust out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, Monsieur. All alone. I know that Maggie said there was someone else, but... Uh, I see. La police, they asked me many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table, they asked. But I am not the only one. The old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Um, so who is this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? Ma, oui. As usual, he came alone that day. At the time of the murder, it was he also. He saw it too. But he said the same thing, that there was no one else at the victim's table. But Maggie swears there were two people. Ma, mademoiselle, let's lawyer. I could not prove this, none. About the lawyer. That was me, I suppose. Must be in Wow, you're the first person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. Hmm. Now who's the one making stuff up? Do you know that? Do, 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 I, do, did I not have my Magatama? I don't have my Magatama? What? I guess there's not going to be any uh, psych locks, at least this time. Or psyche locks, I suppose. But psych lock just feels more nice to say. We found the sports paper in the magazine rack there. One of my customers must have left it behind. Do you have any idea which customer it was? Is there any ideas I have, mademoiselle? I said from my kitchen. I'm not a lawyer myself. I do not wish to speak out of turn. But your defense in court that day was a little, how you say, lacking, perhaps? Uh, even the Frenchman who cannot speak any English could have done a better job. You were very cool, though. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. So handsome. Wow, I wonder just how bad the defense could have been. Every time you open your mouth, the old courthouse stood. Oh man, that's something I don't want to imagine. I wonder if there's... Well, we can look at this uh, divider. This restaurant has partitions that separate the tables. When you're seated at a table, you can only see the tables to your right or left. But I wonder if that might be important. Well, maybe my man's there. Nope, my man's not there. Fuck. Is he here? Where are you? So we're missing something. <laughs> we can look at it again! Oh, it's poor sniper, eh? 
I, why could we analyze it a third time? I understand the second time because it doesn't have the... It, 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 it. Do I have to present to him my badge? Please, Monsieur, there's no need to show me that. You are Mon Phoenix Wright, the worst defense attorney in town. I think you can imagine how he formed this completely wrong impression of me. The last time we met, did I show you this badge? Oui, you flashed it to everyone in the restaurant. Looks like Zen Hop has a bigger fan of flashing stuff than you are, Nick. So he had a fake badge. That badge, is it real? Of course it's real! That's what they all say, but I've been duped before. Give it to me for a sec. Ah! Chomp! She... she bit into it. And I left a few teeth marks, too. I can see that. I just wish I could remember if that means it's real or a fake. Uh, I said it was real! Okay, because if it wasn't there, there's nothing left to show or ask here. So I guess it has to be a Trespian, but what the fuck? Uh, do I have to... Do, do, oh yeah, no, that's why I was uh, yeah, lacking that day. I already showed everything. Remember which it was. I'm already lost. I've... Doesn't seem to be anything else that we can look at. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be anything else to look at at all. Do I, do I have to mess around at the de the, 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 the department maybe? The, but the thing is, it doesn't make sense to me. But we have to go try, I guess, because we only have so much few places that we can even go. These are the detectives' desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tighter than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. I feel like we've <laughs> we've had that one said a million times. This must be the teacher today. He's giving the what? Master Mass turned up at the bank. What's he doing? Hands up, you scallywags! You're under arrest. Hey, that's our job. Looks like Ron Delight's opted for a new career. Quit surfing the net, Chief. S sorry, I was just um. Things feel pretty tense in here. So Mask to Mask is a mascot criminal catcher now? <laughs> that must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Don't die running a red light. Don't die the old-fashioned way. <laughs> die the old-fashioned way of old age. We have a winner. Inject a bit of humor. That's the key. He must be coming up with slogans for a safety campaign, I guess. But there's nothing else that you we've asked everything. We've shown everything. Horse paper. Yeah, we know that. Just as I thought. Hmm. Because I feel like I've gone through everything. Trisbian, what happened, old man? I guess let's get back to the office and ask, uh, what did we do, Maya? So what's our first move? I guess we can go to the attention center. Wait a sec, the person behind the bars because of you. Whoever it is is going to jump in the chance to meet you, right? Hey, hey, let's do uh... Looks like your phone is Zenyop, I hope. I hope you're not. And what kind of name for an evil double Zenyop anyway? Nick, I've got it! If you're gonna ask whether I'm, the, I'm a god of twin brother, the answer is no. Spoil sport. Did you notice Gumshoe was acting weirder than usual? It wasn't me. It's because he cares about. He cares about beard. I believe. What do you mean? I mean, he was really worked up, like a guy who's just found out he's going to be a dad or something. Yeah, I guess he was acting kind of strange. Maybe he realized he's got strong feelings for you, Nick. Considering how we interact, I seriously doubt that, Maya. Well, if he wasn't nervous because of you, then maybe it's because of the new guilty client. I have gone through everything. 
I have gone everywhere, but I know the answer is that there has to be something weird going on at Chess VN, I suppose? <laughs> what is with me getting stuck on parts that aren't really stuckable? I'm just gonna go through all the conversation again. And just see what we can do. Because <laughs> I am lost for some reason. I clicked, I, I clicked down, you shloot of a game. What happened? Just need to activate all the conversationals. All the conversationals. And see if, like, I don't know, something comes up again. Or maybe the game glitched and took away my Magatama somehow. Well, I, I guess I can also ask about people. I guess. I can't ask about myself! I don't... Maggie was a policewoman once, Nesnji Pa. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Yes, but she had had to quit for um, reasons beyond her control. Oui, oui. She was the last suspect in La Murder Investigation, non. Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave her the perfume for the happiness. Happiness perfume? We blended from bergamot, like I've given you before. This is true. I skipped because my brain is on fire. I'm just trying to think. Eh. This is true. Her natural aroma of unhappiness must have been very strong. Just a minute. Your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was a prime suspect after something like that took place before my very eyes. Like something like that? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? I keep forgetting. My brain is just... Oh. Streams of Edgeworth Redeem 1. Brain my brain. Blame the brain, Blaine. Although, reading this would have been funny in Edgeworth's voice, I suppose. <laughs> Got to ask this guy for more info. Stat! What is her? Motiav. When Maggie took the uh, coffee to the over to the victim, did anything happen? We, uh, oui. uh, I suppose you could say so. So what happened? No, it was a, uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie says she didn't even know the guy, but she's still an indicted for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please tell us anything you know. Yeah, we heard how much you like Paper Mario the Thousand Year Doors, so we're giving you the prequel to it, The Hundred Day Window. But what about the ten hour looking glass? Like the peephole. But how can we do this? I don't have my Magatama. And why is he lying? Cyclops? No way. What are we going to do, Nick? We'll just have to remove. What the? What's wrong? The Magatama! It's gone! Huh? I had it in my pocket, but I noticed that. I I can't believe it's actually relevant. Then again. Uh. I had it in my pocket, but it's vanished into thin air. What? Then how could we even see them, though? I thought we had to have the Magatama to even see the Cyclox. But I could see the Cyclox. Maybe that means the Magatama's nearby? Um, uh, Mr. Armstrong, could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting, was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you'll have to ask um, yourselves. Huh? M? The old man spends all of his time down the park. The park? Oh, a park? What park's that? Behind the restaurant, it's called Vitamin Square. Thank you. Quit shaking your tits at me! Let's go check out this vitamin square right now, Nick. So my goddamn Magatama's been pilfered. I guess I can understand why it's called vitamin square now. So this is vitamin square. Yeah, I swear they get the name from now. The fruit scream vitamins at you. Hey, Nick, that's the guy, right? 
Is that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouching looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. My, he's not throwing seeds for them, he's throwing seeds at them. That is a tomato for a nose. Ugh, my grumpiness threat level is just raised to red. Why is his hand like that? <laughs> Can you believe this is one of my favorite cases? It does seem very interesting so far. I used to love sandboxes like you wouldn't believe. Really? You? Sure, finding iron fillings in the sand with a magnet was my favorite thing to do. Iron filling? Filings? Wow, that's too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every single shred of iron in the sandbox. I was such a kid back then. So did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think I came close, though. Come to think of it, I still have all the iron filings I found for way back when. You want them? No. Why would I want iron filings? Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue picking up something someone else threw away! Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? <laughs> That's none of your business! Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it! Give it back! Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> Picked up from the bench in Vitamin Square. Thrown away by the old man. Hey! That's mine! It's mine now, old man. Hey, look! Pigeons! Yeah, and heaps of them, too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Poor things. So they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because they're gray? Is that it? You're overthinking this one just a smidge, Maya. Why is there like a military beat <laughs> to this old man song? This place is so fruity. That's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're among my favorites. Then that, then that apple slide is perfect for you. And what is so perfect about it? Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on. Woo! No way! I'd get covered in sand if I slid down that slide. Anyone can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try, too. I think that's all the looky-looky roundings. Well, let's talk to the guy. Let's talk to the tomato man. Um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes! I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> Great, now he's throwing seeds at us. So you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? He's really chucking those seeds at him. That's gotta hurt. Darn! Eat this! Uh. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Beard? I don't know any Maggie Beard. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Tresbian. Ah, it's a disgrace, I tell you. Not a disgrace. A disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? You mean her uniform? That youth of today? They don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce. Whatever happened to the old Bushido values of Japan? Like honor and modesty. Are they going to bring up that this isn't Japan, technically? What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. You? Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Do you go to Tresbian a lot? Hmm, that miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve in there is not food. Where's the sushi? The tempura? The rice? Tresbian is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. And what about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up there. The yes, the waitresses. They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. God, it's a miserable excuse for a restaurant. That place, miserable. He certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. But if he hates it so much, why does it keep going? Are you a regular at the restaurant, sir? It's just, if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons! You want food? Ha! Take that! 
must be hiding something, right? If he is, I should be able to see a Cyclock or two. Oh, wait. I don't exactly have the Magatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, the Magatama is only on loan. You better find it or else. If Pearls ever gets wind of this, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Sir? Here you go, boy! I just a pigeon feet out of you! So that's not exactly what I was hoping to get out of this guy. Hmm. Would you like to look at this job listing? Mademoiselle! Yes? Are you looking for a job? What? N no, no, I was just... Let me see, your style is un very different, but you have a good face. Different? Felicitations, your past I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I'll teach you everything I know. Quit shaking your tits at me! Nick, help! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. There's a bunch of little trinkets on the shelf by the door. I have collected all these personally. Rack that all in French. Uh, all these clothes and these are absolutely atrocious. Some of them have been circled in red. I really hope Mr. Armstrong's not thinking of buying those. It's really tight behind the cash register counter. Can Mr. Armstrong even get in there? And if he got in, could he get out again? It looks pretty cold out there on the streets. Peaceful, though. It's nice that people can take it easy after the holiday rush. Mr. Armstrong must be a pretty big, neat freak. He already has this table ready to go. Now, if only the food in this place was edible. This must be the table where the poisoning occurred. The stain tells the story well. The whole area is still cordoned off with police tape. I guess it must still be under investigation. Poor Maya, she got literally press ganged. Doesn't care. Can't believe Nick let poor Maya get <laughs> kidnapped. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked for pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. That's what I figured. Will, pal! Have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. I'm sure he's really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. The trial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Oh, him. Why would he take the first one? Like, why would he pass up... Unless Godot was, like, a part of of the crime and knew that that wasn't Phoenix Wright that was doing the trial. Who knows, maybe he did and was just like, no, oh, that's not Phoenix Wright, I'm not gonna bother. Now listen up, pal, if Maggie's found guilty again. Yes? Um, I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up for good for it, got it? I don't think that's legal. So the guilty party was Maggie Beard, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force, you were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know. Hey, what's the funny looks, pal? I was just a... it wasn't anything like that. Look, sure, I was a boss when she was doing the training, but that was it. Nothing happened. I'm sure she was sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. Our big old gumshoe has a little old crush on Maggie. I, I don't like her or anything. He's a tsundere. I, I was... Ah! Note to self. Gossip of Maya about this later. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? You gotta keep it a secret, got it? Sure. And would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal, not me. You'd have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. So I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? I get that's a fucking scouter. What does he have a scouter? Glenn Elg. It's one of those things where back and forth it's the same. Glenn Elg, but backwards is Glenn Elg. Huh. It was a computer programmer. 
I see. A programmer. It was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef, so it was the first time he'd seen the guy. A programmer and a first-time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in a trial. You're kidding! What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal, I'm real busy. I haven't even got enough time to sift through all these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Beard's no liar. She's... she's... Okay, she's a bit out there and a bit off base sometimes. But she was a good cop. That's not exactly com complimentary, you know? So what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory in her te is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone, even the chef. And then there's that CD. Oh yeah, she did mention something about a CD. There was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in front of the pocket of his hoodie. A radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Chez Bien didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. What's that? A sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Chez Bien. It's dated the same day as the murder. We may be onto something here. Let's take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber! Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Ah, it's no good, I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey pal, I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I'm gonna get a handwriting analysis done on this scribble. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about it in any case. Thanks pal, I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue! I wasn't at the trial myself. But I asked that one detective, I know, uh, I know how your defense was. And what did he say? He started off by saying, I'm not a complete loss for words. But he must have found some quick because he went on about how bad you were for an hour. But he said you sucked so much it seemed like you were trying to get Maggie found guilty. It looked like I was trying to get Maggie found guilty. Then shouldn't that have caused the trial to go, you are so incompetent we're going to get you a new lawyer? <laughs> Let's see. If that's all, then back to the detention center. Then back to Chesbian. I guess back to Vitamin Square. Maybe I need to go back to the office? Because there's nothing to look at here! Unless I'm supposed to, like, once again be like, hand something to... Up, oh, yep, come back to the office. Poor Maya. It looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taking a shine to her. I suppose I'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Ches Bien once things have cooled off. Oh, wrong thing. I need to go to the Criminal Affairs Department because I do believe I need to start presenting... What do you can make of this? Nope, can't ask about him anymore. The chef of Tres Bien, huh? You know what that self chef said to me? Oh la la, your body is full of toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. The label says juniper. 
I'm under orders to put a few drops of it on my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady. I mean, guy. Huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal! Give me a break! He's not my type! I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow! Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. So what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Tres BM? It's, um, kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kind of unimportant gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Tres BM and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Uh, don't suppose I got a choice in this, huh? So I better find out more about the chef in Chez Bien than report back to Gumshoe. Which should be my... clue to head back to Chez Bien. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. But, but, but! Who the fuck are you? Um, hello. Then she just leaves. Who was that just now? A customer? She has a sort of dark aura about her. Ah, oh, welcome, B Avenue. Oh, <laughs> that's Maya. Ah, oh, welcome, B Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's just you, Nick. M Maya! Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. And it was that woman I just saw. Oh, oh! Since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. They had to go and, like, redraw her sprite some. That's kind of hilarious to me. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. <laughs> Which is funny because in Japan, they don't do tips. It's baked into the price. Hey Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set, so it's $20, of course. The twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen, a lunch special, please. With all the extras, drink, side, salad, dessert, and gift. I don't need any of that! Just a moment, please, sir. I can't believe Maya's extorting me. Maya's really getting into this. How much is this set lunch, then? $20, huh? We'll have to drink, side, salad, and dessert. It's... $45?! Hey, wait a sec, Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you are, d our deluxe fortified lunch set. Whoa! A dish inspired by lobster in a uh, abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Um, thanks? Come on, Nick, hurry up and try it! Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. <clears throat> well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving! Here, it's yours. Really? Uh Remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate! I just remembered, I've got to clean the toilets. Hey! You can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets! It costs $20 despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. Hilarious. How does that guy manage to make food, good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, do you want to take a peek at the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm, now that- what, now what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? Hmm, that sounds tasty! Hey, wait up, Maya! What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Aren't you gonna show me around? There goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. 
I better conduct a search in the kitchen myself. This is mildly hilarious. Why? My Megatama! Ah, here it is, the famous Trisbian kitchen. It's my first time in here too, actually. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we better search quickly. Chop, chop. Why is that motherfucker have my Magatomo? How did I lose it and why did I get it? I'm gonna kill him. Is he just a snake oil salesman? What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. So you're, so you're saying that he's into that essential oils, uh, or should I say snake oils? Ha! Ah! He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see, one, two, three, 98, 99, 100. They're all the same too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And it doesn't smell. So what's the liquid inside then, I wonder? Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? Give me my Megatama. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of the, most of these seasonings. Hey, Nick, this container has oyster sauce? What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Ah, look! Right there on the counter! My Megatama! What's it doing here? What indeed? Motherfucker steals my Makatama. No clues here. Oh, oh I thought I was, I thought he said that to the book. Now this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look so pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Clarice Armstrong's bedtime literature. <laughs> oh boy, this case. It's already started in a wonky way. Like, again, <laughs> I opened the, the save, and I was gonna do like a small like, oh, and here's my thoughts on something else. But then it, like, it went to the court. I thought I reloaded the wrong save, but then it took a moment for me, my brain to catch up. Wait a minute, the court segments don't go on fast forward. I literally called the evil Phoenix right because of the hairstyle and the flashback. I'm like, oh no, evil Phoenix right. Then it actually turned out to be evil Phoenix right. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? It looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool, read me one. And say it in your best French accent, with intensity, okay? Okay, um, here's one. <clears throat> it's called Printips. The two of them lack actors from the film. The coffee is still undrunk. Sweet nothing's over too soon on that sad Sunday morning. The foolish cocktail is so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea and I know what I will do. I must lie to you, I must. Huh? That's it? Yep, that's a poem for you. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard most of these seasonings. Hey, Nick, this container has oyster sauce. And look, these knives, they look really sharp. I'd like to see one of how the slices through a cheesecake. A cheesecake? You don't exactly need a sharp knife for one of those, Nick. Yes, but it would be very satisfying to see one go through. This is how the case where the writers discovered what palindromes are. Yeah, that's what I said. The victim's name is, yeah, a palindrome. Backwards and forwards. Hmm, that smells good. Something's bubbling away nicely in that pot. It must be the lobster in a uh, abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Isn't that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. Heh. <laughs> Why'd the motherfucker steal my Megatama, though? That's what I want to know. About this. Nope, she doesn't care. I'm a waitress now. I've got a pile of work waiting for little old me. You can just run. She does not care. Not even about the food. Not even about the job listing that got her here. Not even about the victim. <laughs> she doesn't care. Well, I guess let's quickly see. Nope, nothing else. Let's quickly go to Vitamin Square. Why is there a bike there? And it's a messed up bike too. It scared away some of the birds. The old guy's not here anymore. Trat, I still have some unanswered questions for him. But then why is there a motherfucking bike? A scooter, huh? Who would leave it right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted? I guess I must have seen him been in an accident. It's totally wrecked. 
Why is it constant screaming? You can stop now. What the? Oh, hey, it's the killer, because he has the fake hairdo. How did anyone ever even think that this guy is Phoenix? Sure, he has some kind of spiky hair. If you took frickin' Heihachi from Tekken and dressed him up in a blue suit and put him in front of the court, would they go like, oh, that's, a, that's just Phoenix right looking off today. Hey, what do you think you's doing with my bike? But no, I was just... Oh, you've been messing with my new ride? Is that what you've been doing? Is he just literally red? New ride? Isn't that kind of an old model? God, oh, you's gonna pay for this! It wasn't me, I was just passing by! Hey, did who's did one tack cover my saddle in crap, huh? Oh, you's gonna pay! You catch my drift? No, wait a sec, I'm not a pigeon, so I couldn't have done it! A wise guy, eh? Well, they literally made this guy look like a demon. I ought to beat you so I don't feel like you're some smooch of the express train! Why'd I make him Australian? Oh, he's better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you has gotta pay! Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What'd you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. <laughs> Phoenix Wright! You say you, Phoenix Wright! Um, yeah, I am. So you're a wise guy too, huh? Cause I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. What? Out of my way, I got a cruise! He talks funny. Indeed he does. He's gone. And the pigeon came back. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? He wasn't anything like me! Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Pathetic! Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that, and you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes! Have you been here the whole time, then? I was in this strawberry! I had some thinking to do. More like you had some cowering to do! Are you a regular at restaurant, sir? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why do you keep going? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeon! You are food! Ah, take it! Ah, now that I have my Magatama, it opens up. And it's a three. I knew it. This old guy has got something to hide, but what could it be? Maybe I can go, hey, do you know this man? Nope, he doesn't care. Here you go, boy. That's a pigeon feed. Hmm. I'll continue looking around and gathering evidence first. What do you think of this bike? Wait, how in the hell could anyone have genuinely thought that that guy was Phoenix Wright? That honestly diminishes the intelligence of all Japanifornia. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about the newspaper you gave me. It must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled into it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elg. No doubt about it. I expected as much, but now it's confirmed. The victim took the paper with him to a restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. But now we have the question that we can throw out. Well, if he wrote on it and it was in his possession at the restaurant and it was found at the restaurant how did it go from the table in which he died to behind the magazine rack mc bomber i get the feeling i've heard the name somewhere before oh well i guess it'll come back to me don't forget to report back to me whatever you find at the restaurant okay pal since when i start taking orders from gumshoe although I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. First off, bike. Doesn't care about the bike. Then, how about some gourmet meal? He doesn't care about the gourmet meal. Then again, if I did give it to him, he'd probably feel like we were poisoning him. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Oh, huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aroma therapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? 
A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? Smells like a skunk to me, pal! Mom let me borrow that bottle for a while. I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. I doubt it will actually be poison. That would be too simple. I had a lunch. I had a, <laughs> I had a lunch. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect John Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. That must be the same exact, same secret gum she was talking about before. I guess I'd better fill you in on the details. I guess now that we found something suspicious, it's no longer gossip. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You never had lunch at Tres Bien, pal. Uh, yes. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean, and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. And I just remembered that weird bandaged head girl exists, and she's gonna be part of this case. Hmm. The real scoop on the guy is he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million dollars in the red. Half a million dollars, you say? And over on the right is $50,000 crossed out. And fucking Damask Damask in the corner still, which I don't understand. <laughs> Half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd be really in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, just the case. This case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet that Chef's got something to do with the most of them. That's my hunch! Ooh, did it say something specific? The owner of the loan is Tenderlender. A dating site <laughs> has his number? That's a joke. Hmm. Would you look at this debt? Doesn't care about the debt. Oh, uh, would you like to know about the handwriting? Doesn't care about the handwriting. My assistant doesn't care! And he's not here. So the only thing I can think to do is go to Vitamin Square. Uh, you know the sports? Uh, you know the contract? Oh yeah, we could take a look at his friggity friggy. We don't even know that guy is a profile. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna save just as paranoia, and then we're gonna activate his Magatama. Just to see what he says. And see what kind of thing he might be wanting us to give him to break the lock. Could he be Tenderlander? Always going there to make sure that the guy isn't gonna just run away. <laughs> It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't that obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants to eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat! How dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? I can tell that you're not, nor anyone else in the world would go to that place for its food. The proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the lunch menu. That's the 20 set! This food at Tresbien is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a job of work since I was born. I didn't feed the pigeons. What a load of crock. It tastes another story, but the price, it's nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn. Exactly! I have so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn, you're flat broke. Because you were looking for jobs. This is yours, right? My magazine! Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I, I was... Uh, so what? I wish I had more money to burn. 
Ah, we all do. That is the goal. And then we can burn it by donating it to, like, streamers and content creators you enjoy. So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to that restaurant for food. I just go for the... Javakino? Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those had better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor old man would be better off drinking dishwater than you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But, but anyway, yes. That place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. I'm sorry, sir, but there are no free newspapers to read at Tres Bien. Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Tres Bien. So what of it? That was the only paper there. It's dated more than one month ago. What? Do you see what I'm getting at here? That restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one of... One that a customer happened to leave behind. Uh, ah! Why does he look like a weird Popeye? Come to think of it. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything! I'm gonna have to put this guy out of his mis- <laughs> Phoenix Wright <laughs> pulls out a Glock. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you uh, go so much to Trez Bien... Hmm... It's the waitress, isn't it? It's the waitress. <laughs> what are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Tres Bien. Uh. Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress! Ah! But I don't recognize that face! And you're probably telling the truth there, because you weren't looking at the girl's face, but at her outfit! Uh. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because of that waitress's uniform. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please! No more! Stop saying that word! Stop saying waitress! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> ah, so this is case has a creepy old man in it. Um, sir? Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine, I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I even got one of those lousy cups of Javacino every time for eight dollars! All because of the serving girl. Punish me! Lock me up! Really? That's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same another twenty years and you'll understand what it's like. You know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really. Listen, sir. Stop calling me that! I have a name, you know, boy! So show some respect, hmm? I'm Victor Kido. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word! I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident. Which means I have to hear his testimony one way or another. Hmm! I don't believe this. I even broke his Cyclops and everything. I guess I'll have to try and get him when he's in a better mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't like this case as a chat. <laughs> can understand that being definitely wonky. At least it's not as bad as apparently. <laughs> at least it's not as bad as uh, director Hati. And in the original Japanese, you could show him pearls. Like profile and he'd make creepy condiments. At least they changed that, I think. At least I heard that they toned that down. Yeah, that is a bit weird. We have to have a witness for this case. Who do we make it? A creepy old man. I didn't even know you could do that, but I'm so glad they changed it. <laughs> Yep.
Guess let's go to criminal affairs. Nope. Hmm. Then I... Well, I guess we have to go back to the old man. I would have never showed anything to Director Hottie, though. It's one of those things where, like, ah, we gotta make things, uh, like, uh, as possible. Is there nothing to do? Don't think there is. Maybe I can present my badge? Nope, he doesn't care. Maybe we can examine. When I think back to when I was young, I wonder what I found so great about playing in a sandbox. Maybe I'll come back here in the middle of the night one of these days to relive it. On second thought, being arrested by Gumshoe would be too embarrassing to bear. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go to a, like, this playground at night, Phoenix. You'd probably get mugged by that demon version of you. The pigeons are so busy pecking at the seeds, they don't see notice anything else. Seeing those birds eat with such intense focus, reminds me of Maya when she's scarfing down a burger. You don't see many parks like this anymore. What a great place for kids to play. But old man's the only one here, chucking his seeds at pigeons. Maybe he's a murderer. This is where I found the job listing magazine. A guy like me carrying around a magazine like that kind of gives the wrong impression. Guess I better give it back to the old man once this investigation's over. And there's nothing more here. Doesn't seem to be anything else that we can investigate. Nothing else to say, nothing to show. Let's double check the kitchen. What are these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't you think? Mm, lace curtains. You know, if I was a cooking pot, I'd be perfectly happy to sit on a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? With murder. Nothing else in the kitchen. Maybe Pearl shows up? And again, that's probably for the best. The guy might have gone and be like, meh. Maybe we can talk about the old man now. It looks like one of those grouchy old man types. Yeah. That's okay, though. I don't mind guys like that. But if he's involved with the case somehow, that's a different story. I'm sure. Here's a tip for you, pal. If you want to get information out of a guy like that, you're gonna have to find his weakness and try to get under his skin. I wonder what that might be. Women. Doesn't care about him. Full toxins, give him that. Let's talk about everyone. Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have! But I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm not very good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit dumb. Maggie was really supportive of me. She had to support you. You're like, I'm gonna go and support this poor woman who's been falsely accused of murder and then end up being consoled by her. You are a, you are a poor man, detective. You are a poor, poor man. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go to her or for himself? See if we can show anything, because we already showed that. Maybe this. Would have been funny. It'd be like, but detective, what if you need a new job someday? That's um half a million dollar bills. What's the um in there for? Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without the case file in front of me. Excuse me. But I'll tell you this. That Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. It was desperate, you know? No, I don't, but I think I sort of get the picture. Hmm. I do not know. Oh, maybe I need to... show her the old man picture? Oh, 
it's that old man. Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I get a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Ow, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Ah, I see where this is going. We're literally going to exploit his weakness. Great, it's like a... a it's like an, an, a, one of... A, 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 I'm trying to find a word. Is it worse or better than Master Roshi? I'm gonna say probably better. Because, yeah, all Dragon Ball's kind of fucked up. There's nothing really I want to ask that old man. Sure, okay. I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess? Um, sir. Hmm. You again? Hmm. Well, well. I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. That's okay. I think it's going pretty well. Ka! Huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, all right? Play on the slide? Ah, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. <laughs> Pigeon. Ka! How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me, please, sir. Quiet! Can you see I'm feeding the pig? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this definitely has the feeling of ridiculousness like an anime beach episode, huh? I just didn't expect Mia to be like, hold on. <laughs> oh, this is pretty funny. It's fu it's an interesting, like, way to solve the problem. It's, it, it is, like, the solution is funny. It's just that it plays into tired tropes, but Mia possessing Maya to... <laughs> Is an amu as a solution to get somebody to talk is funny. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. Wow. About that incident. You mean the man who died after drinking the Java Chino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. He was a strange-looking boy. The girl took the Java Chino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? Definitely. He was the only one at the table. Then he took one sip of his Java Chino and... And? And he said something like, Argh! And then collapsed dead. Oh, how terrifying. <laughs> You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> he certainly seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see the other man either. Because of the dividers! <laughs> Which is kind of funny. He's just sitting there at the divider. He sees only one guy, and he just thinks, Oh, that must be it. But how would he not see the other, like, murderer guy get up and put the poison in Maggie's outfit? Do you like the food at Tresbian? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. London isn't in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh, yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. I can't take it. I want France. I can't believe Mia's laughing at that guy. You visit Tresbian a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. That man's an ex-con. He, he's an ex-con? I mean, it makes sense. He's literally selling <laughs> snake oil. The essential oil. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes, I can't take this. Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. Well, that, 
I guess that explains how the Magatama got in the kitchen. He pickpocketed him. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. He's a pilferer, so you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course! He was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my job at Chino. He really is a regular. Let me write you a little ha haiku about it. A haiku? A Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about the chef. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat offender. For a moment, I was going to count to see if it was a haiku, but I don't care. If he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy. He couldn't do enough for me. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. I got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for... Oh, it was Maya's idea. <laughs> I think it would have been funnier if Mia was just like... Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of this situation. Definitely interesting, at least. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus no one came to the restaurant. Oh la la, mademoiselle Maya, no! How can you leave me like this? I'm sorry. That reminds me. He had Cyclops, too. I'm gonna have to break those. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteers, of course! Uh, once again, stop shaking your tits in my face. I activate your Cyclox! I'm gonna break your mind like Yami Yugi! Ooh! He is upsetty! What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling! So can he actually sense the atmosphere of people? I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Laws, laws! I will confess everything! You stood out to me! Huh? Well, that was a new world record! It was a lottery ticket! A lottery ticket? La Mano Tidia had a lottery ticket! For half a million dollars! A half a million?! We, oui, but after the incident, this ticket. It disappeared! The ticket disappeared? This was the last motive the, uh, that the prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Then why'd you stick around? Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My laws. You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. And I want to know the reason why. None must see you doubt me, but I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, I can literally see your lies as locks upon your chains. The half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by... You! Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high probability that was you. Oh! Wow, that was one piercing scream even for a man like him. My poor king boy, why? You have no evidence. I'm not a mask to mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. It is a haiku. What is this? A poem? Oh, monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please, read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat defender. Sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you've been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon Dieu! Le Monsieur, you're not, you are the liar. You deny it? Do not make the false accusations, s'il vous plaît. I have no idea how French works, so these are all probably horrible for the most part. So, do you have a proof? I want to see the constable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. My Magatama. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. But what is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. No! 
I don't know French either, so I wouldn't know if you're wrong. <laughs> Be kind of... What do they... What... In the French translation, I wonder what they do. Do they make him Dutch or something? Well, ice cream just about broke some windows. Oui, oui. I have a weakness for the little trinkets and love figurines. My hand just slips out. I cannot stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Wait, it's not true. I'm just a timid little girl in Simon. See, a timid little girl. Besides, this time it was non lost small trinket we it was fifty thousand dollars but no why would i steal it i have no need for such money really now oh monsieur what is it isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble and that you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash loan contract this restaurant is deep in the red isn't it uh -huh. you have a loan to the tune of a half a million dollars that lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. <laughs> well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Uh, oh! Mr. Thumbs. <laughs> he almost spoke in the first person there. You said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man, he was listening to the radio with the earpiece. Maggie said something about that too. Low when the number was announced on the news, I think, all of a sudden he exploded. Yes, half a million. He shouted. And the ticket? We oui. had all its tickets spread out on the table. I, I was so desperately in need of money, so I... But the poison in his coffee? No, 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 no! Oh, no, you naughty man! I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, poor Cremor, he had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. I'm sure that's a really good Glen Helg impression. <laughs> Everybody in the world of Japanifornia can fully <laughs> do an impression of anybody else. Oddly enough, nobody really uses it for uh, for crime in this town. The only one that can't do an impression is the fake phony Phoenix Wright. I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Ma no, ma fille. I was not... Who's that? That's enough. Or is that the the lady with the headband? Or like... Oh, Godot? Mr. Godot! What in the heck are you doing here? Uh, this is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. Came in here for coffee? This is craving for coffee and no, no rounds. Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I'm like, no, just a pretty little girl who everyone was laughing at. Them. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off of the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm just a pretty face. Is that my looks? I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed. What did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself for watching trailers, so we'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Ah, uh, well, are you two? Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. It's like I won't be needing this anymore. It's like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. So far, this is a very interesting case. So, obviously the guy 
who posed as Phoenix Wright. Presumably, the two were friends. But I still wonder what the mask to mask doodle is, the MC bomb is about, the scratched out $500,000, excuse me, and the scratched out $100,000 that had the MC, could the MC bomb actually be, because there's multiple factors here. There's the stolen, like, t CD. The CD that had MC Bomb on it. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> hmm. And again, the Master Mask Doodle, MC Bomb, repeat of $500,000. We'll go a bit into... <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go a bit into the court session, since that was actually relatively quickly of an investigation. But uh, once we get to the actual, like, once we get to a point, we'll stop, because we're getting on in time. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor! Let me guess, uh, Gumshoe? Maggie! Ah! The Detective Gumshoe! Uh, are you doing all right? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you! Yes? You better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest! I think he's serious. Hey, Detective, you're right on our side for once, right? Yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Oh, uh, of course! I've got the situation under control! I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today! If something I say doesn't mash with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal, you get me? I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, Detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. I wonder if there's ever been a prosecuting duo. Like we have the defense duo of... Uh, Phoenix and Maya. It'd be interesting if there was, like, a literal prosecutor version of Phoenix. A bumbling, like, prosecutor who had his own psychic. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Beard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Well, he's getting right to the coffee today. Ah, better. M Mr., um, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Ah! What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whatever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, You's talking to me? It was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you! I'm the real Phoenix Wright! I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. And that's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Buying that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. <laughs> As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during this retrial, nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation. Witness, state your name for the court. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, sir. 
The name's Police Department Detective. Occupation Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> Other way around, Detective. Oh, oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation's tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control, for everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Uh, yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elk. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens, Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Potassium cyanide. The between 1.30 and 2.30, nobody knows? Um, uh, the other floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Jean Armstrong, the owner of the chef. Owner and chef. Owner of the chef <laughs> implies something quite dark. And a regular by the name of Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's hear your testimony. Um, yes, sir. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glen Elg, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee. And we found was... And we... And... Uh, and what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Miss Beard might have had, well, some kind of motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromantic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around, is that understood? I already told you, that wasn't me! So what you're saying is that the phony phoenix could do whatever he wanted and just run roughshod over the entire thing, even though he didn't win, he probably didn't get penalized. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Beard. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. The two testimonies tie up on that. They both said that there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? I feel like we can press harder, and I don't think much will... Let's, let's go. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Ha! Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee that Trez be in, right? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to the Guiltyville. Population the defendant. This is a photograph taken from the near, near the entrance of the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by chef moments after the poisoning... Oh, right. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime... How, Mr. Track, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Well, when was that photo taken? 
It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. I guess that's meant to be like, if somebody was there, they would have been seen. Let's take a look at that photo. But it's still not completely shown. Somebody could have been hidden closer to the left. <laughs> the secret is lying. That's also true, because it's possible that Victor Kudo was blocked by the divider while the chef man is in the pocket of the murderer, maybe? He could be the, the tender linder. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, you have a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. Uh, I guess we can press. And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? So traces of the poison were found in his coffee cup and nowhere else. Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Huh. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, trite? The victim took his coffee black of no sugar. Uh -huh. It seems the poison could have only been in the coffee. Well, let's press. Let's all press. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. Objection. Probably in the... Autopsy. In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey, you're right. You might be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. The... that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Uh... <laughs> wait, what piece was it again? This! Ha! <laughs> he hit me again! Should I be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first-degree burns? Oh, now I remember! Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. To take a good look at the rim. Oh yes, it is unmistakable. There's a clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in the cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to it. Like this! <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's hilarious. Like this! <laughs> For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. Potassium cyanide? I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, detective? It's, well... That stuff's lethal! Eat too much in your history! How much is too much? A lethal dose is 0.2 grams. And that's about enough to finish anyone off. 0.2 grams? How much is that? You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yeah, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. And um, by the looks of it, Miss Beard might have had some kind of motive. Some kind of motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what my golden rule is, Detective? Check out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. Oh. So stick to the facts, Detective. Now then, what was Miss Beard's motive? Come 
Come on, Gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't in any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million! Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then... Is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Let's press. Wait a minute! The mere fact that the lorry ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. That's a half a million dollar lottery ticket? One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. Well, the defendant. What?! So that's extra odd. Hmm. Are we certain that it's a winning lottery ticket? Because... Just because... Hmm. Well, they say it's specifically the, wi the one worth half a million. Hmm. Order! Order! Ha. Huh. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. A winning ticket for half a million dollars found during a body search of Maggie. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now, somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelming me clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime in which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she had indeed commit the crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar winning ticket. That alone provides very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who's weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence is against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. That's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Beard was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. Th that stain looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ha! Huh. It seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. It's because he's colorblind, isn't it? Of course. The coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course. I'm referring to the pocket. The... pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. <laughs> Why'd you guess that? Considering what he said before, in a previous case, and him missing the red, kind of makes me think that he's some kind of colorblind. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in a pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What?! Order! Order! The court will accept these into the evidence. Potassium cyanide. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told, just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? No way, sir. That's, it's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking some of one, some of their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Pull a stun like that again and I'll have drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup. Uh-oh. I thought everyone knew what it was already. 
Hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They've all been clearly established. Well, Trite, it seems you really are phony after all. Ah, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. And I do believe that this would be a safe time to stop because there isn't really any, like, relevant past info that we need to worry about. And we can continue again next time without much worry. And we've been going for about two hours, a little over two hours. So if, if we continue, we'll be here forever. <laughs> and this seems like a good place to stop. This is a really interesting case. It is a bit wonky with the old man who only talks because sexy waitress a little bit of a tired trope <laughs> the characters aren't as intriguing as the last one though there's still the bit like the lady that was there in the in the restaurant for a moment who looked goth and had a bandage around her head if phoenix wright was an oni demon guy who drove a broken moped it's kind of in like those are interesting but Armstrong and Kudo aren't really all that interesting I don't like looking at Armstrong or Kudo <laughs> you know they do see like Kudo seems like a weird pervy uh Popeye Popeye the Sailor Man whereas Mr. Armstrong is kind of a Nothing but a walking stereotype, it seems. And a petty thief. A petty thief. <laughs> phony Phoenix is pretty funny, though. Yeah. So, really, yeah, like, the, the facts of the case are interesting. It's just, like, the drapings are a bit meh. And this is also interesting because we clearly know the murderer in this one. It's the, it's the phony Phoenix. Who did really look like Phoenix, at least in the initial startup. But the facts are kind of interesting. Like, again, the mask-to-mask -mask doodle, the MC bomber with the uh, 500,000 and 100,000, the CD that's missing that was also labeled MC bomber. Again, the broken scooter. It's definitely interesting. Hmm. Yes, so far I still prefer, like, the previous case to this one, but we'll have to see how, what the rest of the case has to be, because it's not bad so far. It's just like, eh, they could have done had more interesting trope characters as opposed to discount Mr. Ro Master Roshi and walking flagrant stereotype that is Mr. Armstrong. But we'll just have to see what the rest of the case has later. Because I... It did take me a moment to, like, understand I need to present, like, somebody's profile to someone, so that took me a bit to uh, going back and forth, but not as much back and forth as, as there was in the last case. I completely forget what it was that made me go back and forth so much. Again, I think it was me not asking Maya about the urn at the Phoenix Wright & Co. Law, law Office. Because normally you don't have to talk to Maya there. And that time I think you did. But yes. Still an interesting case. Not a bad startup. Just the characters aren't as strong in this initial segment as other characters have been. But we will see what more there is to do next time. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. One, excuse me, Neon Icy Wings, the channel of edited content, of which, I swear, content is coming soon. I, I voiced the script. I just need to make assets and edit the video. 
And then there's also Neon Icy Games, my, my uh, streaming archive and streaming YouTube channel. So if you want to watch streams past, like the other Ace Attorney games, the Mass Effect trilogy, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, they're all there. Or if you prefer to watch on YouTube when I go live off of streaming, you can do that too. Or if you prefer to watch me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash neonicywings. And then other such things, if you like art, I post art like my little character in the corner to various websites that can be found through my link tree because there are far too many of them and because the world is mean. With my link tree being linktr.ee slash neonicywings. Also linked there is my archive of our own writing because I like to write time to time. is fun. If you want that, you can look at them there. And then also a link to my Patreon in case anybody wants to be a benevolent benefactor and help me get through the evils of the world. The horrible world where people steal magatamas. <laughs> But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.